dark and it's frightening at night I will be lighting the way with something worth a lot more than your cards they're called knots I got knots I'm flexing on you with my knots oh my gosh take a look through these tubes of my knots listen babe I know it's real scary at night and we're out in the woods and you're hearing some ruffling from behind the bushes but don't worry there's no need to be afraid you know why because daddy's got night vision okay oh hey there welcome back to another episode of p s r Ooh, see how i did that it is a glorious glorious day because we are talking about nods nods i got nods yes night vision but before we get into that you know what i gotta do i gotta thank the most based channel sponsor in all of the land cac or kak oftentimes means poop in other languages but in this language american speak it means high quality ar parts at affordable prices now kak has just started making complete rifles which is really cool but they're known for all of their amazing parts so from the bottom of my heart i want to thank kak for being the best channel sponsor anyone could wish for they love 3d printing and they love supporting me and so i gotta give it up to them thank you kak Woo! all right so let's talk about these what are these things? These are NODs. What does NOD stand for? It's an acronym for Night Observation Device. These are binocular night vision. Now there is a lot to dig into in night vision and I cannot do that in one video, nor am I really qualified to do that. I am just a guy who's just started to get into night vision and I'm going to share with you my experience with these particular binoculars and my thoughts about using these. But if you want to know more about night vision beyond what I have to offer, there are plenty of other YouTubers and a lot of information out there for you to dive into. One channel I suggest is Hoplop File has done a lot of great videos on night vision. Another channel I suggest is Brass Facts, who's done some really extensive great videos on night vision explaining a lot of the basics. I'm gonna go try to explain some of the basics myself, but like I said, I am by no means at all an expert in this and I'm just kind of getting into it so take that for what it is. Now before we get into talking about these nods and my experience with them I do want to give a little bit of a disclaimer about how I got them. So AGM Global Vision, the ones that make this product and the ones that sent me it, they are a company that specializes in thermal and night vision products and they reached out and they said hey we want to send you nods. Do you want to get some knots. And I said, brah, send knots, brah, no way. So they're like, yeah, way, we'll send you knots. And I was like, okay, what's the catch? And they're like, no, just make some content. So that is the relationship. So let's talk about these goggles. So these are AGM Global Vision NVG40 3 APW binocular night vision goggles. They use image intensifier tubes to amplify the light. And that is essentially what night vision does. Now, analog night vision is different than digital night vision. Analog night vision as it is right now is still superior than digital night vision, but digital night vision is slowly creeping up and starting to get a little bit better. But analog night vision is still the preferred method. Now in pitch black total darkness, you will not be able to see anything with night vision goggles. No matter how nice the tubes are, no matter how nice the goggles are, you will not be able to see without ambient light. What these essentially do is amplify ambient light. Unlike your naked eye, they need just a tiny fraction of that ambient light to be able to see and identify things in the dark. Now Photonis, who makes image intensifier tubes, recently put out a video visually explaining how image intensifier tubes work. And I think it's a really great way to just visually see how they work. So there are three main elements of an image intensifier tube. There's the photocathode, the microchannel plate, and the phosphor screen. Photons go through the photocathode and get transferred as electrons. And once those electrons hit the microchannel plate, they become multiplied in kind of like an avalanche effect. And those multiplied electrons, once they hit the phosphor screen, then come through the phosphor screen and deliver the intensified image that you see through your night vision device. Now there's two main shades or colors of phosphor. 
that are used. There's green and white phosphor. These particular binoculars, because it's got the 3APW at the end of the designation, it means that they are Gen 3 tubes and they are white phosphor tubes. I know that they are Elbit tubes because I was sent a data sheet with this device that shows the technical specs of the tubes themselves. They are around 2000 FOM with a signal to noise ratio of about 31.6 on each tube. Now I know that's a lot of information and you might need a slight tism in order to fully understand that. If you want to dive deeper into it, Hoplop File did a great video on how to understand all of these data sheets and specs and stuff. I haven't put my eyes through any other tubes other than these and a couple of other PVS 14s that my friends have. So I really don't know what a Gen 2 tube, tube looks like, but you can get these particular goggles in Gen 2 Plus or Gen 3. Now the current generation is Gen 3. So these are the current generation night vision technology. These goggles are offered in both Gen 2 Plus and Gen 3. The Gen 2 Plus retail for around 4,500 bucks. And on the high end, the Gen 3 tubes from AGM for the NVG 40 retail around 8,500. Now I know you must be saying, holy shit, that's a lot of money. And yes, it is. And it's something that you've got to think about if you want to get them is whether you want to invest that much money on night vision, if it's something that you're going to use a lot, is it something that you want? Is it something that you can utilize in your daily life? Or is it just something that you want to post on Instagram to look cool? Oh so cringe. Those could all be legitimate reasons, but it's really up to you whether or not you want to invest in it. Your experience in the night vision, looking through the goggles, is primarily dictated by the quality of the night vision tubes inside of that unit. Now the other features like the optic quality, some of the ergonomics and some of the other features are dictated by the goggles themselves. So let's talk about the features of these goggles. Now these goggles offer manual gain control, which allows you to change the brightness level essentially. Now these goggles also feature auto gating. If you're in your mom's basement all day playing video games or in the dark jacking off and then you go outside and it's a bright sunny day, you're going to be like, ow, my eyes. The night vision goggles are better at that than you. So if there's a bright light that comes into the goggles when it's super dark, it's going to adjust for it on the fly. Now, similar to other night vision goggles and pretty much the industry standard, these goggles do come with a dovetail mount, which allows you to connect it to a swing arm that allows you to put your night vision device on a helmet. What you're able to do then is wear the goggles instead of just holding them. That way your hands can be free. Now, dovetail is what you'd want to go with, in my opinion, because it is the industry standard. But if you wanted to switch it to something like a bayonet mount, you can switch it. AGM does make a plate for these so that you can adapt it to a bayonet mount. These goggles come with sacrificial lenses as well as these caps for the front of the lenses. Now, if you're not familiar already, night vision tubes are extremely sensitive to light. And if you leave them out in the daytime, especially leave them on in the daytime without covering them, they will essentially burn light marks into the tube permanently. And that's how blemishes happen. They can happen just also over time, but if you don't take care of your night vision, your investment could potentially be very much ruined. Of course, just a little bit of a flash of light for a period of time will be fine. You'll get essentially a temporary kind of little burn mark on it, and then it'll go away, which has happened with these before, and that's completely normal. If you're gonna sit them down and have it pointed at a lamp, for example, for an hour or two, you might run into some issues. So what these rubber caps allow you to do is cover your device when you're not using it. And in addition, they have little tiny holes in them, which actually allows you to see through them during the daylight. So this acts as a protector of the tubes and a way to protect it physically from any objects that might hit it, as well as the sacrificial lenses, which you can just screw on the end and those will physically protect the lenses. Now, another great feature of these goggles that isn't present on some other devices is this articulating feature. So these come out like this, and when you put these out, it turns the device off. So when they're mounted on your helmet and you want them out of your way, you just flip them up and not only will get it out of your way, but it'll also turn the device off in case there's a bright light or something, or if you just wanna just flip it up and kind of forget about it for a bit, that allows you to turn the device off immediately. If they're sticking forward and in their normal deployed position, if you flip it up, there's a lot of weight in front of your head. So what this does when you bring it out allows you to kind of hug the front of your helmet a bit more. 
Now, a lot of people don't realize that when you use night vision, you have to manually focus just like you would a digital SLR camera with a manual focus lens. There's no autofocus going on. If you want your image to be in focus, you've got to turn these dials and make sure it's in focus. There are ways people get around this. Uh, when you have the caps on, it does really help with focus. It kind of makes everything infinity focus because it's coming through that little tiny hole, just like a small aperture would on a camera. In short, if you want to focus on something, you've got to do it manually with night vision. Now, as far as the construction of this device, it feels very, very solid. I have not dropped it and don't plan on dropping it, but it feels like if I did, it would probably come out okay. Now, comparing with some of the other devices on the market, this is a little bit on the heavier side. It weighs around 22 and a half ounces, which is pretty hefty. And you have to consider all that stuff when you're putting stuff on your head, how much weight you wanna be on there. Our heads and our necks aren't necessarily built for carrying any more additional weight than what our brains already possess. So it is important to keep that in mind. Now that brings me to helmet setups. So we're not gonna get super deep into helmet setups. I'm gonna just talk to you about kind of how I have this setup and what I did. What I use is an ops core carbon. It does not offer ballistic protection. It just protects your head from bumps and holds your night vision. Now there are a few ways to connect your night vision to your helmet. Most people end up using the Wilcox G24 mount. I did not use the official Wilcox G24 mount. I know, it's a shame. Uh, I bought the Chinesium version. It was like 70 bucks versus the Wilcox, which is like 450 to $500, which I get it. You wanna be using something nice to hold your night vision. And if it's this expensive, why not buy the Wilcox? And yes, you're probably right. Actually, I'd heard that some of the knockoff versions were okay. And so I bought one, tried it out, and it's been working great. I probably will get a real Wilcox sometime soon but it is a G24 style mount, and that is what most people go with. Now I got a couple different fail safes on my bump helmet. I have four different hooks that I hook to these rings, which allows these goggles, if the mount for some reason comes off, to clamp on to my helmet and at least hang and not hit the ground in case a bump knocks these off my helmet. I do wanna give a brief shout out to Dynamic Fuzz, who gave me this multi-cam tropic fuzz that's just like a Velcro, it holds wire and stuff. Really cool looking setup for my helmet, thanks to Dynamic Fuzz. Now, while we're on helmets, you can mount a battery pack on the back, which would extend the life of this night vision goggle, which by the way, lasts 20 hours on a AA or a CR123A battery here. The compartment is water sealed and everything. I find the battery life to be very adequate for what I use it for. As far as the weight goes, I have a set of weights on the back of my helmet to distribute the weight properly. Some people use them, some people don't, but I find that with the weight of these goggles, if I'm not counterbalancing it and using a counterweight, it does get a little front heavy and it, my head tends to tip forward, which kind of gives me some fatigue in my neck. So even though you are adding more weight, it is balancing the weight out. And so that's what I've done with the back. Some people also put battery packs back there, which give you an additional battery life. And those will just connect to your goggles. AGM also does make a battery pack for these goggles. Now, another feature of these goggles that's great is there is an IR light built in. Now, if you turn this knob on, turn the goggles on, and then pull it out and then turn it another little rotation, a IR light will start shining and you won't really be able to see it with your naked eye. It'll just be a tiny little red light. But when you look through the goggles, it's like a giant flashlight is coming through them. If there are absolutely zero ambient light sources, this allows you to see in the dark. Although other night vision goggles will be able to also see that signature and that light. So that is somewhat of a downside. All right, so that's a little bit about these particular goggles and this model. Now, what was my experience actually looking through night vision for the very first time? The feeling of being in the dark and not being able to see really anything or make out any kind of shadows and then putting on the night vision and seeing everything, the shadows, the highlights, wherever you look is truly breathtaking. The first day I got these, I went to the beach and at dusk, when the darkness started to come in and the stars started to pop out and the sun faded over the ocean, every shadow, every little detail, looking through the ripples of the water, you could see perfectly. And then when I removed it, couldn't see it at all. But for me, it was a feeling of pure shock and amazement when I first looked through them. Now, I don't know why the other people at the beach started running away when I walked toward them, but it was a beautiful experience. Seriously though, there were a group of people parked like right near me and they never saw me at all because they couldn't, but I could see them. And that's the great part about night vision. And when the sun fully disappeared and the stars came out, that's when the show really started because 
you can see so many more stars in the sky with night vision. I'm just saying, the stars look insane. If you can see only a couple with your naked eye and you put on the night vision, you will be able to see hundreds. There is no color when you look through night vision. It's just kind of shades. It's almost like a black and white photograph. It feels very analog. You can see the grain and the grain is kind of dancing in a way. These are letting in a ton of light. And so there's a very shallow depth of field. There are devices you can put on the front of these which allow you to change the aperture basically. DIY ones and there's also ones that you can buy. Those essentially allow you to change the depth of field. Depending on the lighting conditions, that might be what you wanna do, but I haven't done that yet. I just put the little bikini cover caps on if I want there to be more depth of field because of the little tiny holes in here. So while looking at the stars with nods is absolutely incredible and a life-changing experience, not everyone gets it just for that purpose. I wanted to see what it was like to shoot some guns while wearing nods. So that's what I did. And I got my cherry popped with a machine gun, which is the best way to pop one's cherry using night vision. A friend of mine who has an SOT brought his machine gun AR lower. It's a third pin lower and he brought his 22 upper with it, which is suppressed and that is mm, chef's kiss. We started right around dusk and you can tell when it's just around dusk, it is a perfect time to get footage with night vision. And that's a lot of the footage that you'll see with night vision and nods is kind of just at dusk. So we got some amazing footage and I shot this 22 LR machine gun under nods and it was absolutely incredible. Oh, oh shit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my goodness. Man, this is too cool. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Do a little, a little giggle here. Oh my God. Oh, that's so cool, man. Holy shit. One of the things that was awesome about shooting under nods was also shooting the video under nods and using the PVS-14 with the Mod Armory adapter to mount the PVS-14 to my Lumix camera. The camera is a Lumix GH5S and I used this Mod Armory adapter to connect the PVS-14 to the adapter, which then connected to my camera lens and into the camera. If you're filming your own night vision content and you have an extra PVS-14, I would highly recommend using this device because it just makes looking through your camera, which you can utilize all of the features of your camera, but with night vision, incredible. So I actually was able to shoot slow motion night vision footage, which I couldn't find any of on YouTube. So I might be the first person to upload slow motion, 120 frames a second night vision footage through the night vision device itself. And I'm very proud of that. I hope you enjoy the footage. So how exactly was I hitting the targets if I wasn't holding the optic up to my eye and looking through the optic? Well, there are a couple of different ways to aim using night vision. There is active aiming and there's passive aiming. Active aiming is using a laser device or some kind of IR device in order to identify the targets and adjust your aim. And then passive aiming is looking through the optic itself, such as a holographic sight or a red dot. The great thing about a laser is that you don't have to hold the optic up to the lens of the night vision, but the downside to the laser is that other people can see the laser. So if they have night vision, they can see, and you're basically saying, I'm right here, I've got this laser, like this is me, here I am, I'm a target. So there's benefits and disadvantages to using active versus passive aiming. A lot of people are getting more into passive aiming because of the proliferation of night vision devices and the accessibility of them now. Most people, as technology 
continues are able to afford them or be able to identify them with even digital night vision can pick up lasers. However, active aiming is still totally a thing and I was doing that with the machine gun in 22 and the device that I used is a Holosun LS321. That is a device that was provided to me by Goonin Gear. Joe at Goonin Gear has been awesome. Not only did he provide me the laser aiming device, the Holosun, he also provided me this sick Sony A7 camera that was modified to record in IR. So it is an IR modified sensor of this Sony camera, which enabled me to get these insane shots of night vision footage, not looking through the night vision device. So all of the footage you see that's not looking through that circle of the night vision device is this Sony a7 camera, which you can modify in order to see the IR wavelength spectrum as opposed to regular, and it makes the low light capability of that camera absolutely perfect for shooting night vision. The next experience that I had with these nods was when I went over to a family member's house and got to walk along their dirt road. I wanted to just get better at walking around because walking is surprisingly difficult in especially tight areas or even just open areas when you're wearing nods because you are seeing just one circle. You don't have any kind of panoramic vision. You can get quad nods, but those are way more expensive and it will give you a little bit more of a field of view, but you're basically seeing like 40 degrees. And that's also why this is called the NVG 40. So I was walking up the road, minding my business at night, of course, and I hear a rustling beside me. Initially, that is a sound that you're like, oh wait, what's in the woods, what's there? And if it's in the dark and you can't see and you don't have night vision, it can be a little freaky. But with night vision, it makes it a lot less freaky, a lot less scary because you can see almost everything that's in the woods. So I look over and sure enough, it wasn't the boogeyman. It was a little cute deer and the deer was just walking up towards me. So I get keep walking up to the road and stay still and the deer walks like 10 feet away from me, which is incredible to see a deer and I don't think that the deer could see me, but I could see the deer. And then it just went bloop, 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 Bambi through the woods and rustled. And now I know exactly what that sound is. Anytime I'm walking at night, even if I don't have nods on, I'm like, oh no, it's not the boogeyman. They're not gonna eat me. It's a deer, it's just little Bambi. To identify what things are, I mean, that is the best part about night vision is when it's dark, you can identify what something is, and that is the huge benefit of being able to see in the dark. During that walk, I also got to see some shooting stars, which were incredible. Shooting stars, if you're out in the middle of a non-city area and you're out in the country, you can see a ton of them with nods. So that's another thing that's awesome. So the third experience I'll highlight with these nods was when I went out to shoot with my buddy Matt at night at the range, and he brought his suppressed Remington 700. It's utilizing a screech owl chassis and it's in 300 blackout. So JTAC Industries makes this really nice chassis for the Remington 700 and he has a shorter barrel on there and it's suppressed and the thing is so damn quiet. It is absolutely mind-blowingly quiet. You don't need ear protection whatsoever. There's no concussion. It essentially equates to the sound of a mouse farting. And the sound of the 300 blackout hitting the steel is so damn loud. So I shot with the Sony a7S that was infrared modified and the GH5S with the PVS-14 and got some incredible footage. Uh, we were shooting at around 100 yards. We were shooting targets just all around the range and the bolt action 300 blackout is just so much fun. We use a Streamlight TLR VIR2. It's a laser that is meant for pistols primarily and we connected it to the Screech Owl chassis and that's what we were aiming with. So we were aiming with a laser and an IR light that was the Streamlight. Despite it being just made for a pistol, it actually worked really well uh, seeing targets downrange and we even moved all the way back to 300 yards and we lobbed the 300 blackout rounds 300 yards and we were able to get hits. We weren't looking through the scope, we were just looking at the laser and we found out where our hold was and we were just ringing steel at 300 yards with the 300 blackout suppressed with nods on. Boom. There it is. 300 yards. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll let you do that. Woo! 
Yes. We also played around with kind of what our camouflage looked like at distance with the nods and the PVS-14 and what it looked like up close with both infrared light and without. In the future, if you want me to make a video on my camouflage collection and what it looks like under nods, let me know. It could be an interesting video. Even though night vision is amazing and you can see in the shadows at night, it is still sometimes hard to see other people if they are camouflaged. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. And that's where thermal comes in as a very useful tool in certain scenarios. So what are my conclusions on these goggles and night vision in general? Well, I feel extremely lucky that I was able to get these night vision goggles to play with. Now overall, these NVG40s were a joy to use. While I don't have any experience or time under other systems of binoculars, I really, really enjoyed using these primarily because of some of the features like the slip up auto off articulation feature. That came through in the clutch many times. I found myself using that a lot. Taking the nods on and off, it was just so much easier to flip them up and then up onto my helmet and that was great. Like I said before, these are extremely solid feeling goggles and they are a little heavy. That would be the only downside to them I think is just that they're a little bit more heavy but some people might prefer that because they feel extremely rugged and built like a tank. So the Elbit tubes that are in the NVG43 APW are high quality ones. They are not low spec tubes. I would suggest you do your own research and see if these are right for you or not. I have my own PVS14 in addition to these goggles and I will say there are definitely some advantages of having less weight on your head and the ability to use just one eye as opposed to having both occupied. Will you become an operator if you buy night vision goggles. Sadly, no. Uh, you're not going to become a Navy SEAL. You're not gonna be kicking in doors. Although you can look like one on Instagram. So cringe. What's really important if you're serious about night vision and you wanna be better at it is to train. I mean, that's obvious, but even I spending a lot of hours underneath these am nowhere near where I'd like to be in terms of my skill set with them. So it's gonna take practice, it's gonna take dedication to be able to use these. And you don't always have to use them in tactical situations. Just being able to move around with them is a great skill that I still need a lot of practice with. So if you want these and you wanna use them, train with them. Now, I haven't used any other night vision goggles, so I'd love to try some more ones. There are some really cool projects coming up with 3D printed night vision goggles, which I would love to get into. And there's also 3D printed monoculars that are out there and files available for those. There's both digital night vision that's 3D printed and also real tubes with 3D printed housings. And I think that's pretty awesome. There's a project being worked on by Von Scherf Arms, the PVS69. Definitely check him out. I will link his YouTube channel in the description. There's also a gentleman who goes by One Tapic. He has a 3D printed monocular design that uses real tubes, and I will link his YouTube channel below as well. And I think I'm actually going to be building that with a Gen 2 Plus tube that I have that I bought from AGM. So please stay tuned for all of that content. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please let me know by liking the video and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, PSR out.
it's so dark and uh, she just looks so good in the dark, dude. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. <laughs>